Hello everybody and welcome back to another video for the day. We're going back in r slash am I the devil because you guys seem to have liked the last one that I did and uh, you know maybe we could I would like to do some more of these ones. The story time format videos are nice and relaxing and you guys seem to enjoy those background videos footages so you know just happen to be a win-win kind of deal there. So you know if you guys would like to be absolutely amazing show your support and see more videos like this one in the near future be sure to hit the like button leave a comment down below to start up the wholesome internet discussions and if you guys have not already subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. My 23M GF22F wants me to cut off my friend 24F. Are there other ways to reconcile? Hey Reddit, I messed up big time unfortunately. My GF and I have been together for 8 months and we have a great relationship. It's my first post-college relationship and I love her so much. I have been friends with this person for years. She was my first friend that I made in college and she's probably one of my closest friends. She is amazing. We have the same sense of humor and everything we watch is a lot of the same shows and I talk to her almost as much as I talk to my girlfriend. Well, my girlfriend's birthday was a few weeks ago. She threw herself a moderately sized party and I did pay for everything. I asked if I can bring one of my friends she, and she said yes, just try not to bring all of your friends. So I brought the friend I mentioned before. My girlfriend said that's fine. Unfortunately, at the party, my friend got wasted. Somehow, she and I ended up making out in the corner and everyone saw. My girlfriend understandably freaked out and was crying that the party basically ended after that. She kicked everyone out besides her best friend and her brother. I tried to explain, but she was not hearing it. She ignored all of my phone calls and the next day she texted me, I need some time to process everything, don't call or text me. If you try to bother me before I'm ready, we are done. I understand. I don't have to keep saying it in my voicemails, but I feel so freaking terrible and I'm sorry I embarrassed you. I love you so much and you mean the world to me. She doesn't reply and then texts me an hour later. I want to clarify that during this break, that does not give you the right to do that with anything else. Flirt, unshare your location, etc. If you so much as give another person your number, we are done. You didn't have to clarify that. I don't want you thinking I'm so cheater. I have never cheated on you or anyone else. I just got so freaking drunk last night. You know, that was out of character for me. She doesn't reply but dislikes the message. A couple of weeks go by and today she calls me even though I'm at work. I go to my car to talk to her and here's a paraphrase of what she says. She says she thought about it for a few weeks and unfortunately she loves me. As she said up until now I've been a great boyfriend but if we're gonna work through this then we're doing it her way, no negotiations. All the stuff she named was mostly reasonable. The only thing I said I have to completely cut off my friend and block her on everything on my phone and Instagram. I am to no longer ever have contact with her. I think that's super unreasonable because we were drunk and not our normal selves. The thing is, when I bring up my concerns, she says that this is not a negotiation. She said take it or leave it. She's given me until tonight to decide what to do about how to make her more open. I don't think the punishment fits the crime over one drunken kiss when we were hammered. We didn't have S or anything. Edit. We broke up. I called her and let her know that I can't cut off my friendship with my friend. I tried to explain that I'm willing to go to counseling and she said that she will not stay with me if I continue my friendship with her. I repeated that I won't cut off my friend and said, you know what, go to hell. Hold on, so let me get this straight. You done messed up and made out with your friend. Both of you were, you're, you're saying that you're drunk. Uh, and uh, let me get this straight. You are trying to then make the terms for the negotiation. Last I checked, you, she, you were not the one who happened to have seen your significant other making out with the best friend. And you said it was just one drunken kiss. Last I checked, making out ain't just one kiss. That is downright 
face jousting. And Dodier must have not ever had anything that would have made him feel bad regarding relationship and everything, because, you know, God forbid it happened to be on the other foot and you happen to have spotted your significant other smooching up another person at a party. Yeah, no, I feel like I would feel a little crappy after that. Am I the a-hole for reporting my neighbors to their landlord? Well, you're on this subreddit, so, uh, doy. We bought our property two years ago. It is an ex-council slash housing association of houses, which we thought they all here were, but no. After we moved in, I had to complain to neighbors about a tree in their garden blocking morning sunlight from our house. They agreed, but rather than contract someone, they cut it down themselves, also refusing the advice that I gave them about how best to remove it. After that, we decided to complain about leaving their extremely bright backlight on. The man's response was simply to say, sorry, I didn't realize it was on. Can't be that bright. They did at least turn it off. Later, we had to complain about a drip from their heater tank overflowing, hitting a plastic child's toy, making a loud thud each time. He removed the plastic, but fobbed me about the drip, claiming it had been looked at before. They again refused to have the drip fixed, and then they, when they had a plumber on site for a bathroom refit, which the council paid for, saying the plumber was there to do the bathroom job only. They had a large trampoline, but the garden of which their children no longer used. It was an eyesore, so I asked if they had a thought of selling it. It turns out it was broken, and that they were waiting to get rid of it. I suggested they dismantle it and wait. They took down the trampoline, exposing an old fridge behind it. I ask another neighbor, from whose house would have been visible, who tells me it has been there for years, and they use it for garden tools. The neighbor piles the trampoline parts at the side of their shed where they sit for months. I ask when they are being removed, and I am told they are waiting to borrow a trailer. I suggest they hire one or use their car, which is certainly big enough, but these suggestions are dismissed. After weeks of it sitting there, I had enough, so I reported them to the housing authority, their landlords, requesting a formal inspection. This did it in terms of the trampoline. They loaded it into their car, although the fridge remains there, so I doubt the inspection actually took place. Six months later, the children get new beds. The frames of an old bed is left at the side of their house. I ask what they are planning to do with it, and I'm told by one of the children, Dad's going to make something for the garden. Weeks go by with it sitting there, so again I am forced to report it to the HA. The neighbors removed the frame only for me to discover two weeks later that instead of deposing it, they had taken it somewhere and were now bringing it back as a chicken coop. I'm sure the AJ are still to do an inspection, as this horrible fridge is still there, the neighbors never removing it. I'm planning on writing to the AJ again, specifically mentioning the fridge as an issue and reporting the drips both from the tank and guttering during heavy rain, but the neighbor whom I asked about the fridge originally says that I'm being unreasonable. Am I the a-hole? Yes, you must be lovely at parties. Everybody is so excited. They lose their breath when you enter the room because you are just that frickin' stunning. Every time I see stuff like this, I always keep on thinking that HOAs are really just things to keep people on pension busy when they got nothing better to do because they don't have any way to keep themselves entertained at home. And this right here is just another unfortunate example of that. Even if they're not on pension, like, still, you got nothing better to do than to go bug your neighbors because... God forbid they happen to have something in their backyard. By the way, if you're the do in order to do that, you might have to look over their fence. That's kind of creepy. I, 33M, fell in love with my colleague, 35F. Both are married. I don't know what to do. I know I should step forward and forget about her, but I'm unable to. I live in this place and have been married for five years and had been dating my wife six years. I love her, we want a child together, and we just bought our first home together. Everything is like in the book, but of course we have our ups and downs, but 
nothing serious. I work mostly with a French team, and our new colleague was just joined two months ago. Yes, I have eyes. She is gorgeous and fascinating. But so far, I could manage this. You know, anything for the eyes. We met when she started in the company. I was in Paris then, and we became good work friends. And the good relationship stayed throughout the months, even in the remote work environment. Our humor is the same, we share some hobbies, and we can talk about everything with quotes for some reason. I wouldn't say that didn't move anything in me, but still did not waver. Everything changed when we met again in person this week for a week because of a workshop in Paris. She hugged me so firmly, it turned something on inside of me, and I started to see subtle signs, which I know that one hand, it is probably not there, but I want to be sure. For example, she wants to be with me slash my group every day throughout the workshops. I asked her to watch out for my bottle of juice for a few minutes, and even though the workshop already started before I returned, she stayed there because I asked her. She brought my stuff to a different room when we changed it, but I was unaware because I had to leave for a few minutes. I've never asked her, never expected. We had a long discussion about everything. Movies we liked, what we liked to do, how our weddings happened, what kind of parties we like, how back pain and other issues start above 30, and even offline we make fun of each other. I also wanted to spend some time with just her, so I proposed we could have a drink somewhere else without the others. And she responded that the only place she wants to f go from here is her bed, and that her husband is coming to pick her up with my brain. I know that she did these because she is kind, but with my heart, I'd like to believe that she also has similar feelings towards me. When I left the office, she hugged me again so strongly, I still carry this feeling. And before the plane left, I texted her, I will miss you. I didn't want to give away a lot, but still wanted her to know. She joked and asked, the team or me? And then said, it was fun. I only reply with tricky question. I didn't text her over the weekend. I was kind of hoping that she would do it, but I know that she was with her family. What do I want from all of this? Do I want to sleep with her? Yes, definitely. Would I be able to do it? I don't think my consciousness would allow it, but I definitely want to hug her again and again and hold her hands and give her a kiss to her cheek and lips. I cannot get her out of my mind. I want her to know that I want it to be real, but my brain knows that probably is just in my mind. Yeah, and it might be good if it just stays in your mind then, or you know, you find some way to get it out of your mind. Basically, any result that doesn't involve actually acting upon those feelings, that kind of thing. Because I can guarantee you that, that is just common sense of, I know this will not go over well in divorce court. One of the easiest ways to avoid cheating or just never get caught cheating is to just never get in a relationship in the first place. I think my wife is flirting with a mailman and have proof. She claims that she is not and now won't talk to me. My wife and I are in our 30s. We have been married for two years. We got married and we moved into a nice small house in the suburbs. Last summer, we got a new mailman who is objectively attractive. Not going into detail, but he looks good. Towards the end of the summer, I noticed my wife was always outside around the time that he would bring the mail. I actually started tracking when she would go out on a spreadsheet. She averaged going about 20 minutes before the mail guy would get there. Obviously some variation as the mail didn't come at the exact time each day, but it was weird. She would work on our front patio and then have a shirt conversation with the mailman. Then in about seven minutes on average, she would come back inside and work from her office. Another thing I noticed is that her clothes seemed to change when she went outside. Almost 70% of the time, she would have a tank top on and then put a shirt over that when she came back inside. 
I didn't say anything as fall and winter came and we live in a cold climate, so she stopped going out. Once in a while, she would go say hi, but not like in the summer. She also gave him a very nice tip for Christmas, $250. I had forgotten about all of this until I started getting warmer out in the spring. I couldn't do another summer of this, and so I decided to talk to her. Last night, I sat her down and showed her all the information from last year. I explained that I didn't feel comfortable with how much attention she gave the mailman and asked if she could not do it this summer. She didn't understand and maybe didn't understand the numbers. She got very upset and started yelling that she didn't do anything wrong and just happened to be out there while he was there. I tried to show her the numbers again, but she got upset and slammed the computer lid on my finger. At that point, I was upset and walked out and went for a walk. When I got back home, she was gone and wouldn't answer her phone. She finally came home, but wouldn't talk to me. She slept on the couch, and I honestly didn't get any sleep. It's been a very weird day, as she is only talking to me when absolutely needed. Otherwise, she is distant and won't talk to me. Am I overreacting or is this normal for women to talk with the mailman? Update. People are asking for an update and I woke up this morning and she is still pissed. I guess I'll just give her more time. Many of you really aren't understanding the spreadsheet. I used it to show that she went out right around the time the mailman got here. It was a way to graph averages and show consistency. I may have been wrong about the tank top. I do realize that she may have just taken off the top because it was hot outside. No shit. If somebody's got a schedule during the week and that schedule includes gardening, yeah, they're kind of going to be out around the same time. That whole the mailman showing up thing is just happens to be them doing their rounds for their job around the same time too. That don't mean you're going to come home one day and suddenly see a mail truck parked in your driveway. Am I the a-hole for leaving my wife and our four kids at home to go to the Super Bowl? Why does this one even need to be made? It's a yes, obviously. Throw away account because family members use Reddit. Okay, so I, 38M, have a wife, 36F, and four children, ages 8 to 14. My buddies and I found some great deals on Super Bowl tickets in LA, so we bought the tickets and flew out on a day before the Super Bowl, even though neither the Rams nor the Bengals are my favorite team. I was very excited to watch the halftime show with some of my favorite rappers in it. Should also note that this is the first Super Bowl I have attended. Here's the catch. The day of the Super Bowl was also my wife's birthday, and she was planning on just having a day to herself, going to the mall with friends, and getting a spa treatment. However, because I'm out of town, she had to take care of the kids that day. I offered to pay my eldest 200 bucks to take care of the younger siblings while my wife was out, and he said he wanted to go to the gym to hang out with his buddies. My wife wasn't exactly happy with the fact that she had to care for the kids on her birthday, but I offered to treat her to a date at her favorite restaurant later, all the while still sad she agreed. However, when I got back home yesterday, she started screaming at me and calling me an a-hole. She hasn't spoke to me since and is right now out of the house. Am I the a-hole for going to the Super Bowl and leaving her with the kids at home? Edit! She probably mentioned I offered a babysitter for the younger children, but my wife declined as the kids have had trouble in the past with babysitters. Edit too, seeing the comments down below, I get it, I screwed up. I was being an immature, pathetic a-hole, and I do not deserve such a great person as my wife. But, if you could all please tone down the you're the a-hole on my 14-year-old son, come on guys, he's just a kid. I will apologize to her immediately after she gets home, and will tell you guys about the makeup vacation I will plan for her once I ask her about it with her full agreement. Thank you for allowing me to realize my mistakes. Also, for those wondering about the amount of money I spent, I have my own business and my wife also has a high paying job but she is typically not a huge money spender. Edit three, my wife came back home and we talked a little. She says that she is willing to forgive me as I have admitted and apologized to her for messing up this. 
To make it up for her, I will buy her and her two best friends tickets to the Maldives. This is my wife's number one bucket list place to go to, and I talked to the kids about treating their mother with respect, and told them that I would try to set a better example for them. The kids listened closely, and my 14-year-old agreed he should have also been more considerate. The younger ones are currently making cards for their mom about how much they love her, and the older one has already promised to make a special breakfast for her. You went on that whole trip just because you were given the a good opportunity to get Super Bowl tickets and it wasn't even a team that you were rooting for? Something about this just don't sound right because it's totally not like if you had a feeling that one day your favorite football team was going to be at the Super Bowl, you could kind of have like a rainy day fund set aside. It's not like you've already stated that you make the income in order to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, look, not only that, you're doing that on your wife's birthday, not only, you could do some kind of like a heads up notification for her or something of the sort. Something about this just don't exactly fit right on it. Am I the a-hole for backing out on an agreement my husband and I made years ago regarding potential kid names? My husband, 38M, and I, 37F, have been married for 11 years and have two daughters, 8 and 4 years old. I am currently 12 weeks pregnant with our third child. I just had an ultrasound and we were able to determine the sex of the baby, a little boy. We found out the sex out of all of our children this way. My husband is a third, as in John Smith the third. Before we got married, we were having discussions about kids. He did make it clear that passing down his name was very important to him if we had a son. At the time, I thought it was really cute and adorable how much pride he took in it since most guys really don't care about some sort of sentimental stuff. But as the years have gone by, I have definitely cooled on the idea quite a bit. And I don't think I want to have our son be named after my husband that way. Obviously, with our first two kids, we didn't even have to think about it. But when we were choosing names for our daughters, my husband was very much in the you can take the lead on naming our daughters because I already have the name picked out if we have a son camp. It's not like he wasn't involved in naming our daughters, but he definitely deferred to my opinion. So, when we found out that we were having a boy, my husband was very excited. On the car ride home after the ultrasound, it was all that he could talk about. He was giddy like a teenager talking about how proud he would be of sharing his name with his son. I don't know if it was the best time to bring this up, but I kinda had one of those yeah, about that moment. I told him how I know we had talked about this many times before with our other kids, and that I technically agreed to it years ago, but I don't think I want to name our son to have the same name as my husband. I don't think I've ever seen anyone's mood change so quickly and visibly as my husband's did in that moment. It was, it felt like all of the joy went out of his body all at once. I told him that I just don't want our son to be fourth. It seems tacky and has weird aristocratic vibes that just don't seem right to me. I told him that I am not totally against the idea, but I just don't want to agree to it right now because I want time to think about other names too. He took that as me basically saying that I am going back on our years-long agreement and that there is no way we are naming our son after him. He said that this is pretty much just telling him maybe when I really mean no. This has taken all the excitement out of the baby away. He has been withdrawn and quiet to me ever since. When I try and talk to him about it, he tells me that he has nothing to say because he's been very clear about where he stands on this and he feels betrayed by my change of heart. I asked him if he would want to think of some other names together and he told me to give him a list and he'll look at it when he can. I know I technically agreed to this years ago, but it just doesn't feel right to me anymore. So you mean to tell me that both of you made an agreement that you can name their daughters, but you have a problem when he wants to name the son. Yeah, that don't exactly sound right at all. But with that, that is going to have to be it with the video. If you guys would love to be absolutely amazing, show your support and see more videos like this one in the near future, 
be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below to start up the wholesome internet discussions, and if you guys have not already, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.